Oh, I've been spending time on the river since I was 10 years old. I think I built a boat for the river here when I was about 14. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. Boards and plastic cement. Hmm. Just, uh, just rough boards, whatever you could find around. And, well, then there was lots of trout, eh? and later on. This time of year, the salmon would be already starting up the river. We'd be haymaking on that meadow up there, and off you walk over to the river bank and just watch kind of close, and you'd see salmon in the little pools, you know. It was, it was really, oh, maybe hundreds of them. That, that, Did you ever net the salmon? Oh, yeah. You would. Quite illegal, but uh, <laughs> yeah. but productive. The old uh, well, I'll tell you. When my uh, father and his brother next door were doing going good, you know, they were in their good health, and I was a I'd be a young teenager, and uh, down at Mabel's next door here. That was uh, the fellow, that, he was known as Willie G. He was also one of the members of the same family, you know. And he was a colonel in the First World War. So in between, after the war, he, he was a magistrate, you know, sort of like magistrate was the word then. It'd be something like the sheriff, you know, the county sheriff. Right. <clears throat> he had an office in the courthouse. So he had a kind of toe the line a little bit. Well, there was another fellow, he was also a second or First World War veteran. He was the fisheries officer in Bedeck. In those days, they just had one. <clears throat> he was he was the, the total contingent as far as fisheries people were concerned. So uh, salmon time had become, and the salmon were running, you know, want to get a few fish. Um, Willie G would call up Jack O'Toole, he was the fisheries officer, say, I have to go in and see you tonight, he said. So he'd hitch up the horse and wagon, he'd run into town with the horse and wagon. He'd hold a meeting and a get together with Jack O'Toole in town, and, and then my father and his brother would set the salmon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the old fellow nailed in town, he knew it was safe. <laughs> so they'd put a net out in the river down here and we'd get a few salmon. Wow. It was very sporting. <laughs> so the only way you could keep them was for a while would be smoke them and, or salt them. They'd salt some. Never liked it much, but... Um, you try it, you do a few, just... So we never took a lot of fish, we'd... we'd because there was no point, you, you couldn't keep them anyway. Right. There was no such a thing as filling a freezer. Right. We did have a nice house. I'd say the space would be around 20 feet square. And no wood, no wood floor, it'd be the ground. And you'd put about a foot of sawdust down, and then you saw the ice, try to saw it as uniform and as square as you could possibly get it. Blocks about two feet square, and the, usually the river ice then would be 18 or 20 inches thick, you know, if you get it right in a good cold winter. Pack them in right tight together, leave about three feet all around the sides. And then you'd go to a sawmill somewhere and get sawdust and fill that space right full of sawdust and a couple of feet of sawdust over the top or more. And you know, you'd be throwing out old ice when you'd be putting in new ice. Is that right? It'd last right through. Is that right? You could keep some, you'd keep some meat there. You'd, sometimes you'd, you'd make a enclosure in that, make a kind of a box into the side of that and pack some 
pack it in really snug, you know, and put some perishable stuff in there and you could keep it, you know, like meat or something. You're butchering in the fall, you try to keep some fresh as long as you could.